Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Armourer's Bench. That scene was from the 2014 Polish film Maesto 44, or Warsaw 44. The film follows a group of young members of the Home Army during the Warsaw Uprising. In the scene we're going to analyse today, the Home Army squad are in a defensive position on the first storey of an apartment building, when a German Goliath remote-controlled mine approaches their position. They immediately open up with small arms, some rifles, a couple of submachine guns, including a Sten Mark II, a Papa Shah 41, and an MP40, as well as a captured MG42. With the small arms fire ineffectual, the squad leader calls for the Piat. The Home Army had an estimated 70 Piats at the start of the uprising. The British Projector Infantry Anti Tank was the Poles' primary infantry anti-tank weapon. By the 12th of December, the Allies had managed to drop more Piats, bringing the available number up to around an estimated 250. What's so special about this scene is that it not only depicts the Piat, but it also depicts the Piat being cocked. As the other members of the squad open fire, the Piat number one can be seen rotating the outer casing to unlock it, and then pulling it up until the spring inside is cocked. He then lowers the casing and locks it ready to fire. We don't see it, but the number two has loaded a bomb into the bomb support tray, and the number one places the monopod on the sandbags in the window and takes aim. Not only do we have photographs of the Piat in use in Warsaw, we also have some good accounts of its use. One from Spigniew Tchaikovsky Debczynski, a corporal and patrol leader with one of the Home Army's battalions, describes using a Piat against a German tank during street fighting. He describes how the man about to fire the Piat had forgotten to prime the bomb. Tchaikovsky Debczynski then took the Piat and reloaded it. In his journal from the uprising, he then describes firing on the tank below their position. I press the heavy weapon into my shoulder. The tank is in front of me, as if on a plate. I see the enormous armour plating and smoke coming from its muzzle. I set my sights, slowly, carefully. The tank fires, below us again. I aim just behind the turret. I squeeze the trigger. The Piat recoils, the round flies through the air, but it misses the tank and explodes to the rear of it. Fuck. Now my colleague tears the Piat out of my hands. I don't stop him. I load a new round. Two more shots from the tank. Suddenly, it dawns on me. We're on the second floor. Aim lower, much lower, under the tracks. We're too high up here. The barrel of the Piat tilts down. I'm oblivious to everything glued on the gap in the wall. The weapon barks, there's a flash of light against the side of the tank. Got him. While not a tank, the Goliaths seen in the film were extensively used during the fighting in Warsaw. The Goliaths were armoured, remote-controlled bombs which could be steered from cover. These tracked mines could deliver payloads of 60 to 100 kilograms of high explosive, enough to destroy positions and heavily damage or demolish buildings. A pair of Goliaths are also seen in the earlier Polish film on the Uprising, 1957's Canal, which also features a Piat, albeit a wooden mock-up, which takes on a German tank. In Warsaw 44, the Piat No. 1 manages to land his bomb just in front of the approaching Goliath. The blast is apparently enough to break one of the mine's tracks. Perhaps shrapnel or debris struck it. The stricken mine then detonates. The victory is short-lived, however, and the Polish position is raked by machine gun fire, killing the Piat No. 1, and a full German assault follows. The film's depiction of the Piat is quite good, although the Piat does appear to be caught pretty easily. The weapon's recoil seems to be a little light, but is represented with the No. 1 being sharply pushed back. There is a short flash as the remains of the bomb's propellant cartridge are seen as the bomb leaves the spigot. We can also see that the spigot is still visible in the bomb tray, after firing, meaning that the weapon has not recocked itself. The Piat gave the besieged soldiers of the Home Army a much needed weapon capable of taking on enemy armoured vehicles, but a few dozen Piats weren't enough to turn the tide, and the valiant Poles were forced to surrender after two months of hard fighting. The film Warsaw 44 gives a pretty immersive idea of what the fighting in the city might have been like, and it's certainly worth checking out. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this analysis of the Piat scene from Warsaw 44 interesting. 
don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you can, consider supporting our work via Patreon. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you in the next one.